This short video will give you an overview of the mapping tools available to you on Digimap for Schools. Let's start with the zoom. You can zoom in and out using the scrolling button on your mouse. You can use the sliding bars on the top right of a map area, up and down, and if you are using a touch screen device, you can pinch narrow or wider to zoom in and out. The more you zoom in, the more details you get in your map. If you want to get to a specific location, you can use the box on the top left of the screen and tap Enter. Like, for example, if I search for Paris. If you are on a touch screen device such as an iPad, you can type and click on the little magnifying glass on the top left of the screen. As I searched for Paris, I found places in the UK and places in the world with the name Paris in them. You then choose the place you want to find and press Enter. A marker will appear in the location you are searching for. You can search for places, landmarks, touristic attractions, or even just one building, such as your school. I can choose what type of map I want to see in the map selector, and by sliding the circle left and right, I can see the transition through time, for example, from the 1890s all the way to the contemporary map, or I can see an aerial view of that map. Let's explore the left side panel of our map. Let's start with the key tools. The key tools are a brilliant source of information for all ages. You can find different types of buildings, road paths, and so on. The key changes as you zoom in and out. You can use this tool to deepen the student's understanding of maps. You can use the measuring tool to measure distance and area in your map. The distance from this building to this pool, double click as you finish, is 19.7 meters. If I want to know the area of the pool, I will click, click and double click at the end and I have the area. You can use the drawing tools to add elements to your map. For example, you can add a marker, you can choose a range of markers and add them. You can also modify the color of some of your markers. You can add a shape, let's add a polygon around this building. Click and leave and click and leave and double click at the end. You can draw a line between two buildings, you can add a text. I call that farm marks. You can drag the text and put wherever you want. You can measure your line by clicking on the measurement icon and clicking on the line. You can add images to your map, you can add the grid line, and you can also add a buffer tool. Let's say I want a point buffer tool and I want it to be 10 meters from the center of this building. And there I have. If you want more specific information on drawing tools and tutorials, please look at our website and our YouTube channel. You can save your map and your drawings by clicking on the saving icon on the left here and then save map. You need to give a title to your map. So let's call this one farm marks. Let's say it is for my P7 pupils and the name can be, let's say, mark save now my map is saved and i can retrieve whenever i want we also have more information on saving maps on our website register for one of our webinars overlays you can add overlays to your map for example you can use roads names and places and you can use the british national grid for the british maps or the postcode for example at the world level, you can see overlays such as world climate, world human geography, like population density. You can also look at physical geography and explore volcanoes and tectonic plates. And you can look at the reference grids. You can engage in many different activities using the overlays. You can add your own data to your map by choosing file, and getting a file from your computer. Please make sure to look at our webinars. They will have more detailed explanation on how to add your own data to your map. I can also search for an image in my map. For example, I've opened the map of London and I'm going to look for corn exchange. And there are three. One here that I can open with this camera and two over here. I can also click on the left and it will open the image for me. 
Using the information icon, I can know exactly the place where my mouse is in the map. And by zooming in and out, I can choose specific places. And as I click on them, I will have the coordinates of my map. On the top left of my map, there is another set of icons. I can print my map by giving it a title and asking it to print. So let's say test and I want it in PDF. I can add my name. I can choose if I want to have the national grids in my map and if I want a legend. So generate a print file and that is my print file. I can also start from the beginning. This is a refresh button and will bring me to the very beginning of my map. The question mark will bring you to the help page. There you'll find how-to guides and you'll find another series of information, such as how to get in touch with us. You can see dates for the upcoming webinars and you can also look at our learning resources. We have resources for primary and secondary schools. They are very fun and engaging activities that you can do with your students. That's a quick overview of our Digimap for Schools. If you are looking for a more comprehensive tour, you can sign up for one of our webinars. Please also take a look at our social media pages. For more information and on how to subscribe to Digimap for Schools, please visit our page. Thank you for watching.